Greetings, loved ones. Today, we're going to talk about the link between violence and isolation. To help get these messages out, please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a single one. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and hit that like button. And please share these messages with others because you never know, you could be saving a life, saving a life by doing so. That's the whole purpose is to get this information out. So one of the ways to figure out if you are in an abusive situation is to consider whether you have come to feel isolated from friends, acquaintances, and the outside world in general. This is a tricky one in romantic relationships because people, especially when they first couple up, they want to spend all their time together and often spurn the outside world in order to focus exclusively on each other. We've all been there. And it's not a sign of abuse, it's one of infatuation. But abuse and isolation go together. What we are talking about is where in spite of wanting to be in the social sphere, you are being actively sectioned off from people you used to spend a lot of time with, either through outright threats or through craftier channels like pleading or persuasion. The reason that isolation is an integral part of abuse is obvious. Abuse is about control. And you are much more easily controlled when other people aren't interfering, when you only hear one point of view, and when there is no one else to confide in. You miss out on all of the perspectives and opinions that are usually necessary to come to objective conclusions. But psychologically, it goes deeper than this. Feeling free to move and act tends to affect you psychologically, making you feel free in an existential sense too. It's not just your physical movements that um, an abuser wants to control, but your internal world. An abuser wants to control your thoughts and your feelings, your perspectives and your values. This end is much more easily achieved in isolation, which is exactly why cults of all kinds always section themselves off from the general population, keeping outside influences from interfering with their mind control tactics. So how can you weigh the facts when you have nothing to compare them against? So ask yourself, if there are any restrictions, explicit or implicit, on spending time apart, on seeing others, especially friends and family members, those people who in the past, who exerted a strong influence on your sense of self in your life, the feeling of being isolated is painful. We're social creatures and whatever rationalization an abuser gives for trying to section you off, his or her real reasons are selfish and nefarious. They have nothing to do with your best interests and everything to do about control. I remember when I went back to my abuser after his trying to strangle me and police being involved. There was a protection order issued, but after a couple of weeks he used excuses to come by by bringing Christmas gifts for the kids, wanting to see how I was, etc. And yes, I went back to him because I loved him, because I had trouble paying the rent and he offered to pay it. He promised he would change and I really wanted to believe that. But this was when he began to isolate me. I held back for my mother. He said she didn't want us to be together. I was afraid and felt shame about what happened and didn't want her to know that he was back in my life. So I withdrew from one of the persons who loved me most and wanted to protect me. This all ha also happened with friends. I pulled back from my best friend. I was afraid she would be angry with me if she discovered we were together. And he had reinforced that. So I pulled away from everyone and then he got worse and more violent with me. Then I was ashamed and I was afraid to go to the people I love for help because I feared the, I told you so. Hear me now, hear me now, listen, pay attention. If your friends and family do not like how the man you love treats you, listen to them. Love blinds us, low self-esteem blinds us. If your man doesn't want you to have contact with friends and family, hear me now, listen to them, stay connected with them. It could very well save your life. For those who see the violence a loved one is suffering, suffering, hear me now. Stay connected and never say, I told you so. Be loving and always ready to keep the door open. 
The question is not if you will encounter a victim of violence. The question before God is, what will you do when you encounter them? You could be the person who saves a life. You are called. We are all called to be champions for justice. And those who suffer violence need to know that those who love them and even those who don't even know them will step out and reach out to them to give them the courage and the help that they need to leave before it's too late. If you're a victim of violence, hear me now. Know this. People out there love you and will help you. You are valued. You are loved. You are intelligent. You are beautiful. And God does not want you to suffer violence. He wants you to live free from violence in peace and tranquility. There is a way out. Abuse is not love and he will not change. If you are a victim of violence and or find yourself in a dangerous situation, call 911 for help. But also reach out to someone. Keep reaching out to someone. Somebody will be there to help you. The series is dedicated in honor of Gabby Petito, a bright young woman whom the world has lost because of gender violence. And to help get these messages out, please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a single one. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Hit the like button. And please, please, please share these messages with others. This is why we're here, to get the word out so those who are suffering can know that there is an exit to it. And for those who encounter people who are suffering, that they can interact and intervene. You never know. Just by sharing these messages, you could save a life. Tomorrow, we're going to talk more about abusive relationships. Until then, God bless you.